ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have now completed the 17 days of fasting in this month of Ramadan and now we are starting our 18th fast. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He accepts all the fast that we have kept and He makes it easy for us to keep the remainder of this month and gives us such nights to come to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a manner that we become forgiven and the close servants of His Today, inshallah, we want to share a reminder about a certain istighfar, which is known as Sayyidul Istighfar, which is known in English as the best or the leader of all types of ways, all the ways that we can ask for forgiveness. Now, why do we want to learn this specific istighfar other than the reason that it is mentioned? by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that whoever says this in the day with conviction and dies before the evening he will be amongst the people of Jannah also Rasulullah says whoever says this in the night with conviction and dies before the morning he will be among the people of paradise now what does that mean the commentators of hadith they tell us that it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes your situation situation such that he forgives all your sins through this dua and because you've made this dua before you went to sleep or you made it in the morning but you died before the evening and you haven't had the chance to commit any new sins you haven't had the chance to commit any new sins so it could be so that you will be presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a clean slate now that's obviously for the one who continuously reads it etc now in this blessed month of Ramadan such a beautiful month all of us, every single one of us, we have this certain desire that we for be forgiven by the end of the month. There was a hadith, there's a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu was once going up on a member and he was saying, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they were quite shocked and they asked Rasulullah that how comes you were saying Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. And in that hadith, there is one sentence which is related to the month of Ramadan, which is Prophet said that Jibrail, he said, May Allah curse the ones that go through the month of Ramadan but are not forgiven. And the Prophet said, Ameen. So here we see that our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is Sayyidul Bashar, you know, the best of the best of the human beings, Sayyidul Anbiya, the best of the prophets. And then you have Sayyidul Malaika, who is who, who is Jibrail alayhi salam. One is making the dua and the other one is saying Ameen. So we already know that this dua is from two very righteous individuals is going to be accepted in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why we don't want to end this month without seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we did talk about repentance and all these conditions, etc. But one of the best ways of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness is through the du'as that we find in the Quran and in the Sunnah and this particular hadith you could say is almost exclusive for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was given such a gift well if a person was to read in the morning and he reads in the evening then imagine for the next 12 hours if he passes away he will be forgiven. So every single one of us will pass away either in the morning or the evening. Right? So imagine we do read it and we make it this a habit. Not just in this blessed month of Ramadan, but throughout the whole year, throughout the rest of our lives. If we read this dua in the morning and once in the evening, it only takes, you know, at maximum 15 to 20 seconds. But imagine investing those 15 to 20 seconds every single day consciously. Imagine investing those consciously every single day, once in the evening, once in the morning. 
and we were to pass away, which we will 100%, you know, there is kullu nafsin dhaiqatul maut, that every single soul will taste death. So when we do pass away, inshallah, we will be passing away with this virtue on top of us, which is to be forgiven for all our sins. And apart from debts or the rights of others, all other sins should be forgiven, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. So the hadith relates like this. عن شداد بن أوس رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال سيد الاستغفار أن تقول so the dua starts from here اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على أهدك ووعدك ما استطعت أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبوء لك بذنبي and the narration continues to speak about how if a person reads it in the morning he re and he dies before the evening or a person who reads it in the evening and dies before the morning will be amongst the people of Jannah. Now, what is the meaning of this dua? So normally, inshallah, if you just, um, you know, you could easily find this dua available uh, very easily um, anywhere. Um, including online or you could even find it available in most dua books but what does the um, dua mean and that's what we want to really focus on today for a few minutes so the first is it is the best way of asking for forgiveness so the Prophet ﷺ is testifying that this is the best way of asking for forgiveness and what is the dua Allahumma we say oh Allah anta rabbi that you are my lord so like any dua and we learn something about the etiquette of dua from this as well that First thing we want to do is praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acknowledge who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So we say, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani. Okay, so we are acknowledging the fact that our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our what? Our Lord. So we say, Allah, you are my Lord. There is nobody worthy of worship except for you. You created me. Right? So up until here, we have assigned and we have confirmed that our Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we say, وَأَنَا عَبْدُكَ That I am your servant. Right? Then we say, وَأَنَا عَلَىٰ أَهْدِكَ And I am committed to you. وَوَعْدِكَ And your promises. مَسْتَطَعْتُ As much as I can. So what are we trying to say here? We are proving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are his servants. So we have two parts of this dua already. First is that Allah is the Lord and we are the servant. Now, if you really analyze any literature where it talks about Tawheed, okay, we're talking Quran, Sunnah, the books of Aqidah, and you know, the sayings of the Sahaba, Tabi'un, uh, Tabi'in, you know, all of these people. If you were to go and analyze it, one of the key fundamentals of this religion is to, to confirm that we are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in this dua, that's the exact same pattern we see. We see that at the beginning we're saying that we are, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord. But in the second part we are saying that we are his servants. Then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And we say, A'udhu bika, or, or for protection. A'udhu bika min shadri ma sanatu. I seek refuge in you from the evil I have done. So the second thing we're doing is we're acknowledging. We're acknowledging that we have committed evil and it is our fault. Now, if we're such people that we have not, we have not admitted to our mistakes, then what kind of repentance is that? So it's very, we're taking that haughtiness or that arrogance out of us. And we are not claiming that we are free from mistakes. We are not claiming to be those, you know, so holy in the sense that so pure that we do not commit mistakes. Rather, we're telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is things that I do and those are evil. And I seek, I can only seek protection from that evil through your divine help. Then we say, أَبُوءُ لَكَ بِنِعْمَتِكَ عَلَيَّ وَأَبُوءُ لَكَ بِذَنْبِ Let me say, I acknowledge your favours and I acknowledge my sins. فَغْفِرِلِي So forgive me. Right? So again, another beautiful part of this hadith, okay, that and this dua is that, you know, like we mentioned before, that we do know 
and we are saying that Allah you have given me everything and I'm still sinning so I acknowledge the fact that you favored me by acknowledge the fact that I am sinning so please forgive me now you know when you put it like this in such a place where you know in, in general what happens is and if you if you if you look at this from a very worldly view you go to somebody to ask for forgiveness uh, so let's say you've done something wrong to a friend a relative a family member etc and then you go to them and you ask for forgiveness what's the first thing they would say but you knew I don't like this or you knew this or you shouldn't have done it you should have known better those are the kind of replies that we get when somebody when we ask for forgiveness from someone but imagine you go to somebody and say look I know I should have done better I know that you've done me good favors so you kind of you use all of your kind of all the things that they could reply possibly right you use all of them up within your asking for forgiveness so what happens is they have nothing else to say but to forgive you so this is the same kind of technique or the same attitude we're having with our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are acknowledging all the possible replies that our Allah can give us and acknowledging these replies we are including it within our istighfar now moving on to the last part we say that Allah we say that لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت that nobody forgives sins except you and that is to last lastly conclude our dua that we just made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the dua and just to complete that dua and to remind Allah or to tell Allah and you know reminding Allah is a form of dua and we see many prophets do that uh, you know so for example Zakaria alayhi salam he said you know oh Allah you know how weak I am and I'm still asking you you know you know how weak I am he didn't need to remind Allah how weak he is but we do that to talabul talabul rahma so that we can um, attract mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're saying to Allah at the end, لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت that nobody can forgive except for you. So you know when we say that to Allah, we are trying to imply that we have nowhere else to go. And because we have nowhere else to go, please forgive us. So this kind of attitude should be there when we are making this dua. And it really complements with our supplication with our repentance and all of those things that are necessary to become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the dua again just to conclude it is تقول اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على عهدك ووعدك ما استطعت أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبول وأبوء لك بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنك لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت and that's the uh, سيد الاستغفار in reference to Sahih al-Bukhari. Now there is a few other narrations by Sayyid al-Istighfar uh, that we can find but all of them share a very similar virtue to this and a very similar meaning to this istighfar. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to make this istighfar as long as we can, as much as we can and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us death on such a day that we have made Sayyid al-Istighfar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Continue to give give us mercy and blessing in this month of Ramadan. Grant us forgiveness by the end of it and accept all our actions of ibadah that we make in it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.